Mahito, a disaster cursed spirit born from the hatred humans bear in their hearts. Only after just being born, Mahito was able to tackle grade 1 sorcerers and continually evolved until he became a force of nature even Gojo Satoru wouldn't strike fear into the heart of. With a cursed technique that allows him to manipulate the soul, what if Mahito was to defect from his disaster family's plan and go on one big rampage? It only takes one one to two touches of Mahito's palm to reduce even the strongest member of the Jujutsu Kaisen cast to a large helpless babe or a small weeping crystal. Even with the greatest overpowered strategies or abilities, it could take an army to bring Mahito down. This is part one of a two part video between mine and Broken Ronin's channel and in this video we'll be going through the lowest threat to the biggest of every sorcerer in Jujutsu Kaisen, discovering who gets flattened who outright counters Mahito, and frankly, who could even try and fight back. By the end, we'll know who, if anyone, throughout the entire series of Jujutsu Kaisen can stop Mahito and his reign of terror. But first, I need to know, do you like expansive fairy tales? How about lewd anime girls? What if I told you there was a game that combined both of those awesome things together? Cherry Tale is the perfect game for you by Aero Labs. Humans were given magic and power from the gods, but their enemies, the fallen angels, almost demolished their world. Giving up their power to the gods in exchange for help, we bested the fallen angels, for now. But they're back, and using the help of cute anime girls, girls like Little Red Riding Hood, Dracula, or Sukuna, we can fight for our world back in this fairy tale RPG where we fight bosses, locate treasure, and unlock our characters' personal secrets. Use the link in the description or pinned comment. Go download Cherry Tales right now and get yourself well acquainted with the multiple different cuties that populate this magical land. Download on Android or iOS right now and start your adventure to save the world of Cherry Tale from the fallen angels. And it's pretty obvious the rewards for fighting alongside these devilish beauties are plentiful and worth it. With special events, full cutscenes, heavily integrated and fun RPG elements, if you've been looking for a game that hits your dopamine in more ways than one, look no further than Cherry Tale by Aero Labs. Download the game now for free using my link below. Enter my promo code NOOPERATOR in your game profile settings to unlock exclusive in-game prizes. Have your ID ready, this game is not for kids. Thanks to Cherry Tale by Aero Labs for sponsoring this video, and let's get right into it. In order to make sure this gauntlet goes off right, I've got my man Broken Roan in here with me. Yo, what's up, everybody? I was ready to talk about the GOAT versus everybody. Hell yeah, hell yeah. All right, guys. So in order to get things started, one of the very first people that we're going to go ahead and go with is going to be Kiyotaka Ijichi. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, bro, how does how does Mahito deal with him? Like, if we're being real, like, what? There's no way he can beat Ijichi, right? The, yeah. the scaling's just too much in his favor. Uh, honestly, I kind of threw Maito a fucking oddball right from the very beginning. He kind of really doesn't stand a chance. Ijichi, it really is that guy. It just him the, uh, literally just in the flesh. But in all <laughs> honesty, obviously, that's a... <laughs> That's a wipe. I think Mahito could kind of just like blow air in his face. EGT <laughs> just kind of just crumbles to dust here. But um, yeah, he's getting bodied. Uh, moving on, we've got Arata Nita. Oh, wow. Another powerhouse of the verse. Mahito pulls up, makes a big fist, and then one shots him. Like, like what are we doing here? They're getting bodied. Nita is not. Nita is going to be calling for help. That's what I'll say. That That's Nita's contribution. Going to be just asking for another sorcerer that actually got hands to show up here. Yeah, literally gets taken out, like you said, by the giant fucking gorilla arm or something like that like he literally doesn't even need to it, his body just collapses in half all right and then next we have um another top tier fighter we've got my zenin wow my zenin that, that one Yorozu. constructed bullet <laughs> that constructed bullet gonna go crazy yeah i mean this is another example maito steamrolls like up to this point maito doesn't even need to activate his technique like he really can just pull up on every single one of these people and just beat them up with cursed energy enhancements and it's and it's pretty bad yeah 100 percent. i mean just to be generous i mean my could probably land a couple bullets on mahito but like they would literally just do nothing like it would literally uh -huh. just be like a horror movie like he would just like be absorbed into his body and then he just takes her out and then we've got your um um, your lord and savior Ronin, we've got Miwa coming up right next to him. Right yeah, next Miwa one-shots. 
Ooh, Let's yeah. talk about it. Me with one shots. Pulls I knew up, slices them in half. <laughs> Let's cook. I mean, you knew it because I'm spitting. But yeah, I mean, for the sake of this video or whatever, I guess we could say that Mahito beats Miwa. There we go. The the sham is revealed. Let let everybody see right here, right now. This is your leader admitting defeat. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's hilarious. Yeah, every, all, all my Miwa stands in what's up. I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, okay. The real goddess, we've got Shoko Eri. <laughs> this this one's kind of funny. And obviously, like, Shoko gets bodied. I don't want to I don't want to really prolong that any more than I have to. But, like, they're in theory, she might be able to do damage. Obviously, she won't. But, like, just because she can output positive energy, it just creates a really funny image in my mind of, like, Shoko placing her hand on Mahito and then just blowing him up on some, like, Yuta versus Kurushi type beat. Like, I, I, I don't know why that just creates a very hilarious image, but she does get like blitzed in one shot pretty bad. It is kind of crazy how like Yuta using reverse curse technique and just the way that he did really kind of just throws everything into whack, right? Like, holy crap. Shoko really could be this like insane fighter and just decides not to be. Obviously, like you said, she's not. We're not going to spend too much time on this, but it is just kind of funny to really think about how that does change the way that positive energy is looked at. Next is yeah. um my lord and savior, Momo Nishimiya, who Ooh. obviously just stays on her broom far away from Mahito and he can never get her. Yeah, Mahito just gets beat up because of like really strong wind for real. <laughs> he gets tired and gives up, goes away. Yeah, but in all honesty, uh, the <laughs> Mahito's just gonna stretch out his arm, rip that broom from underneath her and then just beat her up with it. Like, let's, let's be real. Mahito, I think, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> or he just becomes a bird. Let's be honest. Here. Yeah, I mean, he he <laughs> literally does that versus Mekamaru. He just turns into a bird and just starts flying like it, they, I mean, idle transfiguration. Uh, it definitely gives them the ability to deal with like airborne opponents. It's it's Momo's flying abilities are not going to be the end all be all in this versus battle, it, surprisingly enough. 100 percent. She doesn't even she can't even run away. Like he's just going <laughs> to she's just going to start flying away on her broom and she's going to hear Kaka right behind her. <laughs> and uh, she's done. Maito's taking her out. We've got Nobura coming. Coming up, Nobura Kugasaki. I mean, <laughs> this one is interesting because we kind of saw it, I guess, a little bit. She kind of performs, uh, I guess, well against Mahito's clone. That being said, we don't know how strong that clone is relative to like a full powered Mahito, nor does that Mahito actually have idle transfiguration to, you know, actually use his main form of attack against her. So while like resonance is definitely just a hard counter to Mahito, and unlike many of the people on this list, she actually has a very direct way to deal damage to him. The big thing is Mahito's faster, stronger more durable and more skilled in basically every other sense of the word you know what i mean like in spite of nobara being a supposed like natural predator or enemy towards him in the same way that yuji is she doesn't have all of the other surrounding abilities that allows her to do as well as yuji does against someone like mahito we might have to completely remake this video just for nobara's sake if she comes <laughs> back with some kind of crazy maximum soul resonance technique because i know that's what you're hoping for uh because I, I you're hope hoping and back. praying your boy is still alive and is coming back meanwhile sure. you are like the, the light side i am like the dark <laughs> side because like uh, this man is gonzo but we uh, i need the trio back together man that's all i'm saying absolutely not we're getting off topic up next is panda maybe the best thing you can say is that since he has three cores he maybe has three souls and mahito just has to kill him three times i mean that's that That's really about it. Maybe now let's let's get into a little bit of theory crafting, a little bit of speculation here, right? Because Panda does have a, a unique relationship with the soul and with things of that more abstract nature. Maybe you could say that because of that, because he like subconsciously has those things. And a, in fact, actually can consciously switch between those abilities that he does have a grasp on the soul high enough level to be able to technically deal damage to Maito in the same way that Yuji and Nobara can. Would that really matter at all just because of how weak Panda is? Not really, but it is an interesting thing to think about that he could potentially be uh, of this caliber of fighter or of this like type of unique counter towards Mahito. The big, I guess, what if you have is Panda's sister, which is not something we're gonna get an answer to, I feel like ever because of Kashimo. It's it's kind of hard to say, maybe you think that the sister can come out and do some real damage. I, d I highly doubt it, but because we'd never really see her interact with uh, any any characters or show off like that much a little power besides, you know, being below that of Kashimo. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna say that gun to my head, if I had to bet money, well, I, I don't know if I'm betting money and there's a gun in my head, then there's probably an issue there. But either way, like if I had to put something on, 
either Mahito or Panda, despite all of the mystery that could possibly be behind the sister core, as you mentioned. Even if we are to give Panda the generosity and say because he's very special in the fact that he does technically have three souls residing in him, I don't think Panda stands much of a chance. Up next, we've got Kokichi Muta, to which this is an easy one. We saw yeah, that fight. We saw it. <laughs> we saw the fight. We saw it plays out. He does a significantly better job than anyone we've than, than, than like Panda. Like Panda is probably <laughs> his greatest competition in terms of performance against Mahito. And Mechamaru like forces him to use his domain expansion, catches him off guard mo numerous times in their fight. For as much as he's getting destroyed, you know, I guess hats off to Mechamaru for even making Mahito sweat a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, one of my favorite fights in the entire series for sure. Up next, we've got Noritoshi Kamo. I mean, it's not really looking all that good either. The best thing you can argue for Kamo is that like in a pinch, he kind of can react to really fast things because we see how he reacts to Curse Naoya. The only thing you can really think to say about him was, yeah, he kind of can react to fast things. Bro, bro's kind of fast. And I mean, his, his blood is poisonous to curses i don't know if that does anything to my in particular but you know that's that's something um i mean <laughs> I, like to be honest with you <laughs> mahito knowing mahito he may just force kamo to like off by like losing all of his blood kamo he's gonna just fight oh, him no. and just allow kamo to just just bleed out on the battlefield on something like mahito may not even have to do it himself the way the way kamo be fighting at least in the cooling <laughs> games you know i have a theory i i have a, i have a sad sad honest theory and i think honest to god gege loved the name norotoshi kamo and he gave it to norotoshi kamo of course and then like he realized that the Norotoshi Kamo he created sucked so bad. He was like, you know what? I'm gonna just reuse this name. Yeah, let me it. spin back on that. Let me spin back. <laughs> let me let me let me try that again, bro. I, I can do better. I don't even care. Fuck it. We're reusing this name. Fuck it. Now Kenjaku. That was a name you had. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got what, what? Oh, I know one of your favorite characters, mm. Haruta Shigemo. Oh yeah, a favorite of mine. Um, <laughs> known Haru friend of Broken Ronin. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Me and him, uh, we we go way back, man. Um, but yeah, Haruta, Haruta's claim to fame is it's going to take a little bit to kill him. Like, honestly, Haruta comes into it with all of his miracles. I think he usually has, not usually, but he has a, at max six. Mahito just kills him six times. I mean, the, the pretty linear scaling is uh, Nanami made him look like a baby. Mahito's stronger than Nanami. So Mahito's going to make him look like a baby just six times. Like, that's, that's really all that happens. He just beats him up. He gets back up. He beats him up again. It, it just gets bad. I'm going to be real with you. Um, it, I, It's unfortunate that I have to do that to my, you know, genuinely good friend, Haruto Shigemo, but uh, I'd, I'd pay money to see that fight and I'd eat popcorn while watching it too. <laughs> I genuinely don't even know how like the luck would even work with like um, Mahito's idol transfiguration. I, I, yeah. I feel like with like if Mahito directly affects his soul, he's going to turn him into like that giant baby or something like weird <laughs> like that. And I don't know how much like the luck is really going to matter in, in that yeah. aspect. The luck might alone just be the fact that he survives that encounter next up is uh takuma Eno. oh man this is uh this is unfortunate i mean this is another character that like strangely enough has some weird ties to like the soul and things like that because his technique is kind of seance based maito basically does, does to him what toji did he's just gonna pull up punch him in the face a lot flatten it and then throw him off a building or something none of Eno's techniques or any of his abilities are gonna work i mean he's like a semi-grade one <laughs> what what is he really gonna do against Mahito. Yeah, he's just going to play around with him a little bit. Mahito might be like, oh, this is kind of fun. And then eventually he's just going to get taken out. Uh, luckily in Shibuya, he got thrown off a building as opposed <laughs> to meeting Mahito because Mahito might not be so kind. And, and conveniently enough, the, uh, these are all these guys are all kind of grouped together because of that small little scrap. The inverse curse user, what's his name? Awasaka. Awasaka, uh, the boy, yeah, yeah, yeah. the man, the myth, the legend himself, and a very notable character in the series. Um, <laughs> I mean, like for him uh, against Mahito, I feel like the inverse technique ag again, like just like Haruta, the inverse technique isn't really going to even have any kind of effect in the battle. Mahito's idol transfiguration will pretty much just ignore that completely, do whatever it needs to do. Like if Mahito lands a hit, that is obviously if Mahito's going around firing, you know, other transfigured humans like he does in the beginning of the Yuji fight, maybe those you could say would not cause any real damage. Image, but if he actually lands his hands on him, I feel like, oh, again, it's just going to get ignored. Yeah, I mean, Idol Transfiguration is just a hard counter to what Awasaka 
has really I, I mean megami says as much inverse is not a very good technique it's not geared towards extremely complex hacks it, it's why he it's why he says oh you know gojo seal to like fake him out or whatever because if this guy's scared of gojo right the inverse technique is it this all-powerful ability that it negates and ignores all damage or something like that complex abilities that don't rely on like direct impacts will definitely have trouble with him that's that's kind of the big thing and maito is a very crafty fighter anyways if he sends a dozen transfigured humans at him and none of them are doing anything and he you know he starts attacking him all this maito not only has the time he has the leisure because he won't take any damage to just completely sit back and analyze and figure out what the technique is anyways so if you don't think that auto transfiguration can do that I mean, you're wrong, but that's fine. He would just beat him up anyways conventionally, which he can make extra limbs. He can definitely fake him out in the same way Megami and Yuji were able to together. Either way, you either think it takes a little bit longer because Maito has to figure out the technique or you understand that our transfiguration is just one-shotting him regardless. Here we are probably about like a couple of decent minutes into the video through a couple of decent amount of sorcerers. And we're now just talking about like things that Maito can do because quite frankly, like pretty much almost everyone besides Mechamaru, of course, and maybe Nobara have like any reason to bring anything out other than a, all right, hand touch, you're done. Yeah, like, exactly. it, it's actually kind of insane. Like, and, and like, even we're just talking in theory with uh, Awasaka, like if he really even needs to do that, because Mahito, as we've seen, is a very smart person. He can, he, he can right. figure shit out. And especially when he's a direct counter, no, nothing's going to stop him. And especially yeah. when it comes up to the next person, which is the Necromancer Granny, and just being kind, if you want to consider them a duo, like a fighting game game you can consider the <laughs> granny is the same person or same fighter as her grandson i mean if she summons someone like toji maybe we could get into a some kind of discussion here yeah but i mean do do, do we feel like we want to offer her that or do we kind of just say we that can we can kind of discuss it because i think we agree if toji gets summoned yikes uh, but i don't know if mahito cares enough to let that happen in the first place like i can very easily see mahito just being bored by the two of them and once again ino the guy we already said gets bodied by mahito took a look at both of them and was like yeah, these guys are kind of trash. I don't know what they're doing here. The only reason he got beat up is because he he didn't like just steamroll them and and like stop the the Seance Ogami from like summoning Toji. Maito will not have that issue. He will if he wants to, he will walk past the grandson, turn him into whatever the hell he wants to, hmm. and then he's gonna walk up to the granny, stop the Seance, and then turn her into like I don't know a finger sized transfigured human. The only way Mahito like faces any trouble here is if he allows himself to see them bring out their full power. And I just don't think Mahito is going to do that against someone he doesn't find interesting. Whereas if the seance is completed um, and the necromancer granny gets to summon someone like Toji, may may maybe not going so well. <laughs> yeah, no, Mahito <laughs> isn't doing so hot after that one. Uh, of course, of course. We can actually kind of run through these next couple ones pretty quickly because they actually are all faculty members at Jujutsu High. First up, we have Utahime Iori. Obviously, we haven't seen in battle, but through interviews with Gege, we know she has a singing curse technique. Obviously, yeah. that's a wash super powerful yeah i mean like yeah maito just runs up bodies like come on now and then i've got a uh, nanami which we saw their fight not gonna have much of an issue with nanami not at all i mean we saw mahito almost killed nanami when they were when yuji and him were 2v1ing him you know what i mean yeah and that was an early mahito with way less abilities way less strength way less speed i mean nanami i know i've kind of uh garnered a reputation as a nanami hater Why is so obsessed with me? but um, I mean, we all know Nanami kind of gets, uh, he kind of gets bullied here. Yeah, unfortunately, this is another reason and another way for Broken Ronin to say Nanami gets the shit kicked out of him. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, don't know so how all part of my plan. Yep, I don't know how we got here, but again, here we are. We keep coming back to the same place, keep circling <laughs> around. And somehow we also have once again one of your favorite boys, Atsuya Kusakabe coming up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kusakabe, listen, bro, let me get this off, all right? I, I already I already sense the I sense the anger building up as I'm about <laughs> to hype him up. Like let's make this clear. Kus Kusakabe loses, right? But Kusakabe is just just kind of a funny sorcerer to me because of how avoiding he would be of Mahito in the first place. He would just be like a special grade what i'm not i'm not about to fight you bro he's like i'm tired of this running away but in a, in a direct confrontation i think it's pretty clear kusakabe does uh he does lose simple domain is cool i guess and he's like kind of competent and strong that's why he's a grade one but kind of competent and strong doesn't win you a fight against maito necessarily so he, he's definitely taking the l on that one yeah unfortunately we just haven't seen enough to really just put a 
him in that spot where we could say that he would do much damage. I will be honest here. I won't take the I won't take the piss for this one. I guess he did defend the maximum Uzumaki. Uh -huh. yeah, I, I guess. guess. So um, <laughs> you know, you know, we'll we'll, we'll say right now. He's no, not utter but, trash. Yeah, he's not utter trash. But I, I think Maito is a pretty strong curse. And up next is another pretty easy easy cakewalk for Maito, which would be Principal Gaku Kanji, who once this one I have no idea how he got into the position that he's in. Maybe back in the day, he could shred a lot better than he does now. And maybe those old fingers don't work the way they used to. Yeah, and it's just like, even in theory, like, bro, his technique is so bad. You can't, I can't even, like, find a way that he, oh my god, he, like, strings his guitar really, really hard. And then Mahito takes it, and like, no, come on now. Mahito runs up, puts his hands on him, and turns that old fart into, like, uh, a transfigured human. And that's all that's happening. I've got Charles Bernard, the gay gay self-insert character. What is there to say about Charles? His technique is kind of cool. I don't think it would be all that useful against someone like Maito, um, no, just because there's probably an initial an initial physical gap that he just won't overcome, to be completely honest with you. I don't know. Maybe you could argue, okay, if he does land the initial hit, Maito will have trouble hitting him. Well, that's not really the case. You can just outspeed it. Hikari shows that. That you can literally just turn up your speed and move faster than his prediction allows him to react to. Or you can literally move into his blind spots. I mean, what's he going to do if Maito just spits up a bunch, of, a bunch of transfigured humans, throws them out, and then he has to predict a dozen attacks? Like, he's just, it's just not going to really work out all that well for him. And then obviously he's vulnerable to idle transfiguration. So he's getting dealt with easily. Exactly. And just the way that Maito can just contort and transform his body into different ways and just like stretch his arms like Mr. Fantastic. Future sight or not, like Charles' body can only move in so many different ways. And like you said, as we've seen with Akari and just because Charles really isn't that battle hardened, he's kind of new to all of this. He stands no chance against Mahito. And now I kind of grouped all of these people together because they're not really notable on their own. We can say they all attack him together. I have Ghetto's family here. I mean, the only one of note, and this is if you're counting in, would be Miguel. He's he's kind of the big, like everybody else, I'm just going to be blatant. Like he's, they just get bodied. They get bullied. Uh, absolutely destroyed. Miguel's kind of interesting though. And it's m mostly because of his portrayal in the Volume Zero movie. Because as opposed to like the actual uh, manga version of that, he does come out looking significantly more impressive. For one, I, I, everybody knows the the absolute just beat down that Gojo gave him, right? That just that 20 piece combo. And Miguel kind of comes out of it like fine, like injured, of course, but he's, you know, alive, which is a lot more than many characters can say. Then he obviously has the black rope, which is like a, a curse technique negating or, you know, um, like a curse tool rather and that may present kind of a problem for Maito because it kind of allows him to deal damage and it allows Maito to have to actually use his fists and like actual impact abilities to deal with them but in all honesty I mean it all ends if, if Maito if you really think it gets there it all ends when Maito just opens his domain and then bodies him or he can just use a plethora of transfigured humans to attack him from all angles forcing him to use the black rope somewhere else and then he just he just catches him off guard while miguel is kind of strong and like kind of impressive especially based off the volume zero movie it's not enough to make me think that oh he's, he's really pushing marito to his limits here yeah i completely 110 percent agree i mean like the whole family just gets bodied and miguel's maybe with the black rope but no i mean mahito is just especially once again we we're talking about fully at their peak Mahito. Mahito that knows the full extent of their soul, has polymorphic soul, Isomer, is able to just summon basic transfigured humans, is able to twist and contort their bodies. I mean, even in the Mechamaru fight, we see him just be straight up, just become animals. Even if it's a whole group fight, Mahito just has so many different ways to attack at all different angles and just take on, even when you have someone like Miguel backing up everybody. I mean, like, I just don't see, even in a group fight, Mahito really <laughs> backing down, especially because this is someone that can make clear clones of themselves that are almost as strong and able to take on people like Nobara, which I feel like Nobara could even take on these goons. Some of the next people that I want to go over are also a big group, so we can kind of talk about them and get them out of the way as well. The Zenin clan members, Ogi, Ranta, Janichi, what's that one earth guy, Cho Chocobo? I don't even know. Yeah, bro, you you better than me for even naming up to that <laughs> point. Um, Maito runs through the, the Zenin clan in general very quickly. The, the best thing you can do is like you think okay ranta freezes him with his whatever his technique is right and then he just sets him up for a bunch of attacks but at the end of the day we see that ranta isn't able to hold back anybody regardless of their strength you can push back based on your own physical ability and while maito is no like maki or toji what he is is someone that's able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with yuji and i have a hard time
I'm thinking that Rance is about to just completely restrict the movements of Yuji. Even still, it's not like those attacks are going to do anything to Marito anyways. Yuji can make the big fist and attack him. That won't do anything. Chojuro or whatever his name is, he can- Chojuro, he can, that might be it. Yeah, there you go. He can he can make the, the rock attacks. That's not going to do anything. As soon as Marito gets free, they're getting transfigured, they're getting bodied, or they're just getting one shot with like big punch, if we're going to be completely but honest. But Ronin, what about Blazing Courage? Well, you know what? Blazing Courage actually is a pretty good counter. And Obi <laughs> did say he's not inferior to Naobitone anyway. Yeah, no, nah, he's getting bullied. He's getting bodied. He's going to bring out the fire. He's going to bring that sword down. He's going to be like, let's duel. And then Marito's going to be like, what? He's going to make his own like idle transfiguration sword and then cut him in half. It's not going to look good. The one thing that I do and will say is that fire is, in my opinion, a really big counter to Mahito, whose a lot of attacks are flesh based. But I don't think I would award that generosity to someone like Ogi. He uh, gets thrown in the trash like everybody else. We have Mei Mei. Mm. So I know this is your girl and uh, yeah, I'm going to be very delicate in the way I say this. <laughs> all right. Um, she dies. Oh, um, no. I'm sorry. I, I don't know how else to put it. Ui, we can be there if he wants to. He can watch that happen, I guess. Marito puts the paws on her pretty badly. I think she may get him with like an off guard bird strike or something, put, put a hole in his chest, really make him like, oh, wow, you're kind of interesting. And then he just beats her up or uses transfigured humans or transfigures her soul. You know, the same thing that's been kind of applying to a lot of the other characters on the list. The one thing I will grant her, though, is that she probably requires more out of Maito physically than most, if not all of the other characters we've mentioned so far. But that's mainly it for Mei Mei to me. Damn. I mean, I will say I completely like agree with you that uh, the bird strike would definitely probably be the biggest threat to Mahito in that instance. As we know, Mahito can basically just reform himself. It would do no damage to the soul. It's just uh, as, as much as Mei Mei, I think think is one of the better grade one sorcerers just like with her physical feats everything like that i just don't see it i mean i see once again it being a fun opponent for mahito to uh, go and uh, you know have fun with but other than that again the the result is always going to be the same someone that is kind of um just a funny little uh person we can throw in here that i probably should have went over earlier but we could just get through him right now do you remember Habra? oh geez <laughs> the nonami's like old friend right like that guy yeah exactly uh, how long it took you to remember him is exactly about yeah. how long the fight would take probably yeah i mean i think he got beat up by like some like grade one curse or something if i'm remembering <laughs> their backstory correctly he got his um, entire bottom <laughs> half removed yeah um mahito so uh, bullies him and he brings that trauma back up for Naname. And uh, you know what? Just for funsies, someone that also probably should have been a little bit lower in the list, but is going to get brought up here is Inumaki. Uh, curse speech one shots, duh. Oh, the guy that's yeah, under the Momo, course. right? Oh, definitely. That, but, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, no, being honest, I definitely do think seeing curse speech interact with Mahito would be uh, interesting to say the least because curse speech, while I don't think it is really practical against sorcerers, it definitely is a very dangerous attack against cursed spirits for sure while it does directly depend on the power of the cursed spirit as we see even when inumaki uses it against someone like hanami while it's able to fling them backwards it, it doesn't do really any damage to hanami yeah. but it definitely does present inumaki a, a lot of variations of running away or defending he may hit Mahito with like an explode or something and that may you know Mahito may be over there and over there and over there and all over the place but as soon he's gonna reform and then he's gonna come back and i mean like it's it's not really that big of a deal to him no no unfortunately not moving on the last member of faculty actually would be masamichi yaga wow listen i'll say this right if yaga pulls up with a, a prep prep time Yaga, right? He pulls up with, with the Cursed Corpse army. Maybe he got an argument because he was, he was, he was, you know, ranked special grade or uh, supposed to be ranked special grade because 100 of that. 100 pandas. <laughs> yeah, 100 pandas versus Maito. I mean, I don't know how Maito's gonna get out of that one. Um, but <laughs> the night of 100 pandas. Damn, that yeah, would he, be uh, what could have been. But outside of that, you know, super prep time, you know, all powerful Yaga, like bro lost to Gakuganji for real. I mean, He's clearly not him. Just embarrassing. <laughs> I want to throw in Reggie Star. I know you're a Reggie fan, so do you want to you want to jump in on how you think Reggie does first? I do really like Reggie. I can't lie. I think his curse technique is very interesting, and it presents him a lot of variations. I mean, heck, he was able to give Megami a really decent fight, despite once again him having a lot of different opportunities to maybe get away or have a lot of opportunities to defend and not get touched by Mahito. A two-day spot trip 
is not changing uh, an idle transfiguration. So the thing about Reggie is he's like kind of a, a, a step above a lot of the characters we've talked about so far. Physically, I mean, Megami considers him not bad. He's, you know, he's decently strong and fast in that category. Obviously his technique, like you mentioned, is useful for evading and like doing long range kind of damage. I could see Mahito getting caught off guard by like uh, a, a semi hitting him in the face. It wouldn't do too much except catch him off guard, but it would be a little bit of an interesting thing. Unlike a lot of the characters up to this point, he does have a I guess a counter for like a domain expansion if it got there it probably wouldn't but if he did you know he would have one his trump card is literally just dropping a house on mahito which also wouldn't do anything like it Maito would maybe get crushed. We've seen this very similar thing happen with him in his fight versus Anatomy. And he comes out like nothing happened. He's just like, yeah, uh, okay. And then he'll just beat up Reggie after he's exhausted most of his abilities. And sadly, Reggie doesn't have a domain expansion or anything like that. So even if it came to it, not uh, not looking too hot. But I definitely don't think that would even be necessary. I think Maito is kind of fine. Mm -hmm. Hazanoki, who I also really like and I think is really cool, Mr. Exploding Body Parts. I, I think paired with Reggie, um, I think they're a pretty a disastrous duo. Obviously, I don't think they would beat Mahito. But I mean, Hazanoki, how do you feel about him? So Hazanoki's cool uh, in the sense that like, I think he's going to, he's probably just going to be someone that might be somewhat aggravating for Mahito, like aggravating using that very loosely. You know, you throw a bunch of eyeballs, maybe you throw a finger or tooth at him, whatever. Mahito will just be continuously, I guess, exploding or whatever. But the the big thing that I bring up, because, you know, believe it or not, I actually have a, a, a person that will be watching this video that actually thinks Hazanoki is really strong. So I'm talking to you right now. <laughs> Hazanoki's explosions are not that powerful, at least when he's using things as small as like an eye or a tooth and the reason i say that megami just outright tanks one like he gets caught off guard with an explosion to the face and then he proceeds to fight reggie after that right so if megami is just sitting here obviously it did damage to him it made him a little dizzy it hurt him but it's not some nuke like Hazanoki's eyeball explosions are not tearing down entire buildings and things of that nature so i think walu would probably like it burn maito a little bit i think maito could probably get through something like that with relative ease and the big thing would just be getting to Hazanoki and attacking him which I think would be very well within his ability too. Just to run through a couple more people really quick Chizuru I think his name is who had his curse technique was like big meaty claws and then Remy um scorpion hair tail whatever the fuck that was both obviously just just touch of a palm n n not even needing to do any kind of real physical work at all yeah it's it's uh not close nope n not even from the start so we can kind of knock those guys out of the way actually a decent pair from the culling game that we can also run through really quickly which i think maybe we might have a little bit to talk about depending on how you feel dido or mayo um the sumo guy how do we feel like either of them would kind of handle mahito so <laughs> the interesting thing about those two is their stats are kind of like ridiculously high considering the role in the story dido is enough when with a blade to genuinely terrify naoya and maki i mean he, he also does combo but who really cares about combo here And then he's able to actually cut Naoya, not only like surpasses her ability, but he's also fast enough to hit him with an attack that Naoya couldn't dodge. We see that's not like a fluke or like an off guard thing because he does it multiple times. He comes back. As for Mio, I mean, I don't think he's necessarily as strong as Dido, but we do see that he's able to like sumo wrestle Maki and kind of main handler a little bit, like at least early on in their little training arc, I guess. It's not like both of these two characters are powerhouses by any means, but if you give Dido a sword, right? Especially if you give Dido the soul splitter, <laughs> Mahito may actually kind of be in like some serious trouble because that's like, it's a direct counter to him. And then Dido's actually just as strange as it sounds, kind of really strong for no reason. Yeah, I was gonna say like, if Dido hits Mahito with that same slash we saw him hit um vengeful spirit Noya with it th th that might be it like if yeah. he gets him right where the soul is and just like like that little purple gem we see like if he cuts that in half like that might be we that might be the perfect way to exercise him which would kind of be an interesting thing to really say because like you said it kind of is weird that he just like is that powerful I don't think Mahito would lose I think it would be like a an ultimate Mechamaru situation where he gets hit and he's like what <laughs> Dude, what where where did that part of my soul go and then he like fixes it or whatever 
and he, he, he and then he just takes it more seriously i think a domain expansion is probably the way to deal with both of them after that i i can very easily see Mogza being like all right no thank you domain and then he just we see that neither of them really have a counter to a domain expansion yeah. as when they go against now yeah they're kind of just done for one more little fodder uh character to throw in before we get to some of the more heavy hitters we've got haba and maybe his girlfriend or whatever if maybe if she's even named these are the uh the the jet hair uh helicopter uh, hat yeah uh, fashion statement people yeah i mean haba's got i mean what, what was he called by the military a monster listen all i'm saying is the military's never called mahi to a monster <laughs> that's uh, crazy nah but um i mean yuji <laughs> just kind of like one shot him i don't see why marito is not doing something similar or just you know he takes the helicopter blade he he closes it on him marito just touches his head and then you know now you're a you're a helicopter in the sky um <laughs> except a little bit higher than you could ever fly before he just bodies both of them it's uh it's it's you know in spite of uh haba's like monster like strength it's not really gonna be not gonna really be too useful against someone like Maita. rip okay and then moving on now we can get into some people that may have a little bit more discussion behind them possibly depending on uh how we both feel kirara hoshi so <laughs> this is kirara is such an annoying character to right. say, like that, to, to argue with right because it's just like the thing is is maito is gonna be probably it's just gonna be a big game of keep away right mm -hmm. so the big question is because because uh, it's linked to your cursed energy too so she, he can't even send i like uh transfigured humans at her because just like with megami shikigami those will be rejected as well do you think maito can figure it out or would he just be like i i'm not doing this pop open a domain expansion because that would just make the attacks hit regardless yes. like is that is that just how the fight ends he's just it's like oh my okay i'm not i'm not playing this game domain expansion boom you're done he's just like he's just mad as he walk i can't believe i had to use that much cursed energy <laughs> I'm hotter for real like he'd be like oh this is interesting and then after like the 17th hour of doing it he'd be like all right fuck this like you said the transfigured humans wouldn't be able to do anything about it he wouldn't be able to you know send his arm forward because it would have to follow the path we know we don't know shit about stars mm -hmm. so uh, i feel like that's kind of the only way he's gonna finish that which like you said he would just kind of be pissed that he had to use that much cursed energy on a uh, an opponent that probably didn't require that much effort but because they have such an annoying ability eh, maybe if you want to pair these two characters together i have now bito and noya zenin yeah so i think both of those characters kind of present mahito a problem in a very similar way that now you presented maki a problem and now bito presented dagon a problem and the thing is is like they can't really shred through Mahito. I mean, Nabito is kind of just punching Dagon in the face like a lot and Dagon's kind of like, yeah, okay, the big thing is he's fast. I, I, that, that, that's my real issue here. You know, he had to use demand expansion because of that. And I think the same thing would kind of apply for Mahito. At least I can't think of a reason it wouldn't. If he's relative to Yuji and Nabito's faster than that, then Nabito is going to be faster than him. The big thing is just, now he's probably to a lesser degree, but I think he still applies too. They're both just going to be running all over the battlefield, tagging him a lot, not doing any damage, but just hitting him a bunch. Well, Maito tries to figure out what to do. The thing is, with Naoya, a domain expansion is a very valid strategy. Like, a domain will just kill him because Naoya, in his human sorcerer form, does not have a counter. He doesn't have a domain expansion of his own. Uh, at least as far as we're aware, he doesn't even have a simple domain. A domain expansion just gets opened, he dies. Maybe you could argue that he has, like, the domain counter in the same way Naobito does. It's not too crazy to say that and in that case it's just another annoyance for maito because the one way he planned on on getting a victory there is kind of like thwarted you can maybe argue that he uses a point too right but the only problem with that is that one nabuto might be able to react to that i don't really know i don't want to throw that out as like a too yeah. uh, like a too crazy of a thing but like it might be, i don't know it might be out there but the the second thing is that the only reason maito does that in character is because of sukuna right the reason he does that is specifically to avoid sukuna because he knows that already if he doesn't know that these two characters have counter domains he'll probably just open it like he would any other and then it's countered and then he's back to square one and it leaves him in this this really weird position where neither of them can kill each other because of their abilities and hacks and things like that. I think it's really interesting because I feel like Falling Blossom, maybe in this instance, would that even actually work against Mahito's domain where uh, Naobito would actually just be sitting in the palm of Mahito's hand? Because even Naobito even mentions it where it's not the most ideal domain defense. It, mm, it, really, okay. is it, it really is specifically, um, we even see Ogi use it. Um, it's mostly a swordsman technique. It's meant to actually be used to kind of deflect sword abilities whereas now Bito is able to use it because it's just a bunch of the flying shikigami that are kind of coming at him so he's able to kind of block it but i feel like in this instance i feel like that wouldn't even really help him in, with the domain expansion just based off the way that mahito's actual sure hit effect works 
Oh, that's actually something I didn't even consider at all. Like, Mahito's attack is not something that, like, physically manifests and then attacks you. It's just something you are just hit with. That's actually very fair. I, I think that's probably just how the fight goes then. It's just, I can't hit you, domain expansion, blah, blah, blah. You can't even really argue that, like, Naobito seals that off because in the same way that Dagon could open a domain without his hands, we kind of know Mahito can do the same thing without opening a hand seal. He just opens his mouth, the domain mm -hmm. sign opens in there, and then he just has one. So if you think that Outer Transfiguration gets past um, Falling Blossom Motion, which no op just presented a really good argument for as to why it would then yeah marito has to use a domain expansion against them because otherwise he doesn't really have a good counter we have the boy the man himself himothy aoi toto which yeah. we kind of already saw him even though it was a duo battle we did kind of see him not really do so well against mahito yeah so i mean like toto is definitely one of the stronger people i think we'll we'll have covered up to this point boogie woogie is something that mahito considers like a very disorienting technique and i think it it's something that would allow him to avoid lethal attack for a little bit. But I mean, I'll put it like this. If Toto was taken out of the fight in a like a, a 2v1, right? And Mahito was being ex like expressly cautious of Yuji's abilities there. Really no way you can argue that Toto in a in a 1v1 with Mahito is going to do better. It, it just isn't going to shake out like that because we see how much Yuji like exponentially increases its attacking options and all of that. So Boogie Woogie wouldn't be as effective as it is in the Mahito fight. You know, he'd last maybe a little bit. He'd probably keep away for a while. But we know that even with the Black Flash, he's not doing all that significant damage to Toto. And we do know that Mahito does not have the same issue. While Toto is a pretty formidable fighter one of the stronger people on this list it's just Maito is just just has a, a handicap honestly yeah. <laughs> i feel like we can kind of go through this pretty quickly because we kind of already saw this battle yuji itadori yeah i mean yuji just loses the thing is that's really interesting is Maito can't really use idol transfiguration in the normal way or in his preferred way to just like one shot yuji obviously if like yuji did not land the toto assisted black flash right before Maito transformed he would have been torn to shreds right so even if you think Maito and Yuji stand on even footing base to base the instant spirit body of destruction or whatever that long ass form name <laughs> is called instant um, spirit he, body <laughs> of distorted killing yeah Jesus he literally just he transforms Yuji will have to pull up a maximum force black flash to even like do damage to him Gege's made it pretty clear that uh, like Maito coming into that form with full power wipes the floor with Yuji. Now that's that's Shibuya era Yuji. That's honestly Yuji while he was the vessel of Sukuna. I don't know if you think this changes how sh how much stronger we've seen Yuji in that. Granted, it's only a small portion of the fight, right? Or it's only a small portion of a fight. But we do see Yuji has like a massive power boost against Sukuna. Do you think that that changes how this fight goes at all? Hard to determine because even Sukuna seems surprised at how much stronger Yuji is than he thought he would be. There definitely was a power up and that definitely comes down to Yuji's bloodlust. There's overall his emotions at the time fueling his power. So I think we need to see a little bit more from Yuji. I mean, we've all been waiting for that Yuji power up, right? We know he's yeah. needed one. We've been talking about it for almost, I think, a year or almost two years now. I definitely agree with you that if he didn't have Toto in that moment, he definitely would have lost. It was only because of the combined effort of the two of them that they were able to beat him in the first place. Everybody shed a tear and also say a prayer for the departed. We've got Megami Fushiguro uh, coming up. Mm -mm -mm. So Megami is a character that that kind of fits into the, the Toto category where his technique allows him to play keep away a lot. Due to his mind and technique, we see he's able to like temporarily avoid characters on the level of Toji or just outright Toji. I don't think he really has a good way to deal damage to Mahito at all. Like in, in all honesty, he, he just doesn't. Divine Dog may be able to like pierce his skin or whatever, but that doesn't really matter with obviously Outer Transfiguration. And Megami is always uh, in danger of getting one shot or maybe two shot or three shot, depending on how he scales, you think soul wise to characters like uh, Toto and Nanami. How long is Megami staying away with his combined Shikigami efforts? He may pull out the domain as a last resort in the hopes of like maybe <laughs> sinking Mahito into the shadows and like just sealing him there. Not really that great of a win con. Obviously his trump card is Maharaga, but even if you think, you know, Maharaga comes out and just bodies Mahito, that's at best like just a draw. It's not really making mm -hmm. these win anyways, so. I think it is an interesting concept if Megami really is put at his wits end and isn't able to do anything against Mahito, at the very least he can stuff him in his shadow and just keep him there forever. Um, <laughs> I, I think that is really funny and I think that is viable. Like, could you imagine like that's just something Megami has to 
live with is just Mahito, yeah. just uh, Mahito's extra weight on him for the rest of his life. Yeah, um, he's like, if I'm not careful, he'll just he'll just pop back out of the shadows. <laughs> he's like, all right, I got I got to keep him there forever. Yeah, and I definitely think overall Mahito would play the long game in that one and eventually win because when Megami eventually <laughs> succumbs to old age, he's like, I'm back, bitch. I got <laughs> yeah, you, you, you deactivated your technique. You're done for. <laughs> we got those guys out of the way. Now we're into some more heavy hitters that probably stand a much larger span of a chance. Maybe not so much because they have direct counters, but just because they really are just strong characters in general. Kashimo Hajime. Ah, uh, yes, Kashimo. So, I mean, I think I think we agree, like, in terms of pure stats, he's probably going to be piecing up Mahito. He's going to run up and, like, you know, be hitting him and shocking him a lot. There's this interesting thing I kind of wanted to run by you because I'm assuming the, the next, like, couple rounds of characters are going to be going over are, like, Kalen Games characters. And there's this idea that, you know how, like, they have to suppress the soul of the the vessel that they're in, right, subconsciously. Do you think that gives them, a, the like, the similar unconscious soul attacking ability that Yuji does just because that's the way Mahito kind of describes Yuji's uh, Yuji's natural like abilities against him? I think that's a really good question to ask because the whole reason why Yuji is a direct counter to Mahito is because there's two souls residing in him. So even though I don't, I don't even think I, even when Yuji and Mahito first meet, I don't even think it's something that Yuji is aware of where Yuji's just throwing punches and landing a hit because he's like, I'm just going to beat the shit out of this guy. Even when Nanami shows up, Nanami's like, how'd you hurt him and he goes oh i just punched him what do you mean yeah I, I just hit him with my fist what are you talking about yeah so so i think it's kind of an unconscious thing that he's kind of aware of and it be it as it may the culling game players they've been around for a lot longer who's to say whoever has knowledge of whatever whether they have knowledge of the soul or whatnot if it's something that uh just a couple days on the job yuji is able to figure out yeah. i have no doubt in my mind that because all of these characters would essentially be the same kind of situation that Yuji's in, that they mm -hmm. would, whether consciously or unconsciously, be able to be a direct counter to Mahito. Now, they wouldn't have the same kind of defense against idle transfiguration that Yuji does, simply because yeah, Yuji they, they has don't have Sukuna. Sukuna as a guard. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So I, I, I think idle transfiguration is still something they have to worry about. However, mm -hmm. Kashimo's lightning strikes, even his Ooh. physical attacks, they would probably all hit their mark and all also have the capability of doing damage actually to Mahito. Yeah, and if you if you think that Gashimo can deal damage like that, the thing is with with characters that we're talking about at this level now, they're not getting one shot, right? It's just not happening. Mm -hmm. We see that Nanami's able to survive it. We see that Toto's able to survive it. Nanami we, needed we like what two to three taps. It, it's to the point where even like Mahito. Now, granted, it does like uh, take Nobara out of the fight, but it's to the point where Mahito even looks at someone like Nobara and questions whether or not he can deal with her in one shot without a configuration so it's not like definitely for for weaker characters it is a one-shot ability but once you get higher and higher into those like upper echelons of strength you're at least looking at two to three landings of idle transfiguration we know that maito is not shy when it comes to sharing the the inner workings of his ability especially because we know that he gets like an amp from it so i could very easily see kashima being caught by one in a very similar way he was caught by like drumming beat from panda and being like okay that's pretty impressive you will not hit me again with that sorry and then just like being completely aware of the palms because that's all he has to really worry about um stunning mahito with his like his electric uh cursed energy and then going in for like huge lightning strikes to really deal massive damage to him if if mahito goes up against kashimo at this point a even instant spirit body of distorted killing no matter how many transfigured humans he summons because we, we we've seen the kind of crazy parkour fight that he had with hikari i don't think going up against multiple different transfigured humans at once is going to be any problem for kashimo he would he would make it a big battle scene something that people would rewatch watch for years if Mahito meets Kashimo at this a stage um his gauntlet run is over unfortunately this is going to be the first character that actually brings an end to Mahito on their own with little to no issues whatsoever so uh, keeping along with this culling game strike we've got Druv Lakdawala which I know most of his ability were off screen so we don't have to talk about it too much but we kind of have an idea of what his abilities were with the orbiting domain and the two giant rat Shikigami um I don't see either of them presenting much of a threat to Mahito. I mean, bro, base Yuta ran up, one shot him without, seemingly without Rika, without the need for like full power, bro. Druv is like, I'm in a deadlock with these guys, but he's clearly, he's clear, that's clearly like a, a, almost a pure hacks thing in all honesty. Anything around him himself is not going to be that impressive. Mahito, I, I feel like should very easily be able to deal with him. I think Mahito, if Mahito finds who he needs to take out in order to get rid of the Shikigami, he's just going to be on a warpath to get rid of them at all costs. I mean, there's two giant Shikigami that Mahito has to deal with, but if Mahito is able to 
the idol transfiguration, the Shihigami, not going to be much of a problem. Now, the way that Yuta uses uh, Drew's technique is interesting to say that it's it's unknown if he can just throw attacks in the middle of this orbiting domain. But e even if he can, I mean, Mahito just summons his domain cancels that out, claps his hands and finishes him off just like Yuta did. And just keeping it in Sendai Colony, let's move on to Ishigori, another hard hitter, maybe not as strong as Kashimo, but we know that he had the largest cursed energy output in all of history. Someone who's also going to be aware of the soul due to being an incarnated vessel, capable of throwing hands pretty equally with Yuta. Yeah. And also we know that the Granite Blast is very destructive, able to take buildings down. And yeah. also he can repeatedly fire it. There's not a lot of cooldown and required it. He can use domain expansion and also use his technique Granite Blast uh, specifically almost like a couple seconds after the domain expansion. So this is someone that does really realistically not even have to get close to Mahito. I think Ishigori is kind of like what happens when you amp up Mechamaru where there was like heat blast you were sending at him early or just one actually hurting Mahito's soul to their amp to their very limit. Every time Ishigori shot a Granite Blast at you, Yuta, it stated that he has to use reverse curse technique to heal. Yuta being someone that is at least on par with the Yuji that he fought earlier in that arc. Ishigori is able to go back and forth with Rika. Obviously, like you said, he's able to open a domain expansion, then immediately follow up with a granite blast. Even if you think uh, the, the granite blast technique isn't going to be the thing that finishes Maito off, right? If they get into a domain clash and then their domains break or they're just, you know, they both run out of energy to keep it up. Ishigori can literally fire off a full powered granite blast. Mahito, who cannot defend himself without a transfiguration and probably just end the fight right there simply because Mahito's technique will be burned away, but Ishigori's won't. Like, even if you think it gets to that high diff of a battle, Ishigori still has like a very clear way to deal with someone like Mahito. I think the biggest problem, just like with everybody else, is that he can have his soul transfigured. But similarly to Kashimo, it's probably going to take multiple hits, three, four, maybe even five, depending on how tough you think he is. The big thing is his character to me, because you mentioned he could he could definitely stand back and do all of that damage. I wonder if Ishigori would like that would that would probably be what makes it closer to me. If they get if he decides to get really close up like and, and wants to really throw hands with him, you know, for dessert or whatever, that may get him a few too many touches. Um, I don't think he would lose necessarily because of that, but I, I can't imagine himself making that battle harder because of because of the way he wants to go about fighting. We already saw him kind of bite off more that he could chew before so it's definitely not something that he's foreign to so are we kind of agreeing that ishigori is also someone that kind of just yeah. brings mahito down yeah one of the main reasons why they're able to also stop Mahito in their tracks is because both of them are able to defend against Mahito's domain, which just opens him up to a lot of win conditions specifically. But moving on, after all this talking up we did to Ishigori, how do we think Oro um, deals with Mahito? This is an interesting one. I think her, her biggest issue is that all of the techs we've seen her do are melee based. They do require her to be really close. Thin Missile Breaker or Thin Ice Breaker, whichever one it's called. That one is pretty strong. Like we see it does significant damage to Yuta. That is also also uh, an ability that is stated to make him use reverse curse technique every time. So in terms of like pure outputting power, she's like pretty good. She's fast enough to react to Granite Blast and redirect those. Her durability, I think it's probably her weakest point. She's definitely not tanking as many attacks as someone like Ishigori or Kashima would. That being said, I think she could probably push Mahito to a high diff. I don't know if I necessarily think she wins, but I could see her I could see her giving Mahito like a significant amount of trouble coming down to like a domain clash and then Mahito just winning after that. But it's mm -hmm. it's one of those it's one of those battles that I think is a little bit more up in the air. I'm not as confident in saying that Uro would win. She is more vulnerable to auto transfiguration. Her durability is lesser, I think, than Ishigori and Kashimo's. Her physical stats are also the lesser of the two. Even her sky manipulation may not be completely useful against Mahito because imagine you you'd redirect his hand, right? You you make it warp and then he just warps it again to to attack you <laughs> while you're expecting to like to, to be uh completely invulnerable. You know what I mean? She overall is like very strong and I think she would push Mahito quite a bit, but I don't know if I think she'd be able to seal the deal. She puts herself at risk too much in her fight style. Everything that she has to do is up close and personal. And as you mentioned, even if she does warp the sky, Maito's a special case with the twisting and contouring to where he can just 
warp along with whatever path he needs to take to follow through with the blow. Having matching domain expansions where they can break off at each other, become a tug of war, and to where it just will become a war of attrition over time. This is a war of attrition that Mahito can win. I definitely see a lot more win conditions for Mahito than I do see for Euro overall, just because at the end of the day, after just a couple taps, Mahito will win. One of the last reincarnated sorcerers that we're going to have on this list um, is going to be Yorozu, someone that we just kind of saw everything they have to offer. Kind of a fully realized Mai Zenin with the construction ability, the liquid metal, the insect armor. Her domain expansion, I feel like because of the perfect sphere, is on a whole nother level to most other sorcerers from what we've seen, even though we didn't see a lot of it. Focusing her one sure hit effect on the perfect sphere, I feel like does give her sure hit a lot more weight than a lot other sure hit effects like your self embodiment of perfection. I don't know if you have any thoughts or if you disagree. Yeah, so I think the big thing for your Rozu is just a question of because she she damages Sukuna in their fight, right? And the question is, do you think that like Sukuna is holding back expressly his durability here for the sake of like adapting? And I don't think so. And to kind of like back that up, I think that I mean Yorozu's output is is just said to be on par with the strongest of the hand period right? It's just said to be that high. Sukuna heals from the attacks that she lands. We see that perfect sphere. I mean, she, even knowing Sukuna's durability, she seems extremely, extremely confident that it will, it will just obliterate him. And I mean, the infinite pressure statement makes that pretty clear as well. So I think Yorozu, once again, super weird, might be strong enough to deal with Maito because obviously if she's suppressing Sumiki's soul, she obviously has the, the soul hacks needed to hurt him. Perfect Sphere might be like a literal one shot even outside of a domain because we see that, see that she's able to like maneuver it around just due to her liquid metal manipulation. Her insect form is pretty powerful as well. I could very realistically see her doing pretty well against someone like Maito, especially when we're using like a direct comparison with the way Sukuna dealt with Ishigori versus the way Sukuna dealt with Yorozu. And with her ability and knowledge of the soul, if she can actually damage the soul with her liquid metal, I mean, she could just trap him and crush him at the end yeah. of the day. The overall just kind of hacks that construction does offer, even though we do see Sukuna kind of override a lot of it with Maharaga's adapting. Um, it is yeah. an, a, a pretty OP technique, especially with the perfect sphere. Um, Yorozu mm -hmm. was a very strong character, and I think she would be um, our third contender that actually would probably beat Mahito. The three people that so far have beaten Mahito are all reincarnated sorcerers in the Culling game, which... Yeah. Every single person that's hoping for Mahito to come back or every single person that was upset that we lost Mahito, I think just overall by some of the results of this gauntlet, we're kind of seeing why Mahito was kind of taken out of the story. His relevance in the story kind of overall leaves as soon as the culling game starts. There's too many people that can just outright counter him. Moving on to two of the last culling game players, at least people that are introduced in the culling game that I think have both very interesting curse techniques and I'm interested to hear your opinion on how they interact with Mahito. So first person that I want to touch on is going to be Higuruma. Now, I'm interested to feel like how you how you think deadly sentencing his domain. Bro's getting think. locked up. Uh, yeah, <laughs> bro's oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, Mahito committed all the crimes, bro. Like, you could literally just be like, did you do? Like, it's it's so interesting because Mahito is just, I, I put I put Mahito in the same category I put Tsukuna in the sense that like, bro, they are so easy to lock up. There's going to be so much evidence of all the shit Mahito's done. Because I think that'll get him straight to the death penalty. I'm going to be oh, real yeah. with you. And that means Higuruma can... But the tables are completely turned. Higuruma can one-shot Maito, and Maito cannot one-shot him because his technique will be taken. The big thing is, it's not just his technique, right? Because if it was just under the technique, I think Maito shown himself in Shibuya to be strong enough to deal with somebody that a cursed energyless Yuji can kind of fight on par with. We know that cursed technique removal disrupts your cursed energy manipulation and doesn't allow you to use it properly. As we know, cursed energy manipulation is like the foundation for characters' physical that. So if that extends to cursed spirits, which it's kind of up in the air, but if it does, Mahito would just be weaker than he is usually, and Higuruma might be able to just just one swipe of the sword. It, it just stated very very blatantly that no matter what, under under every condition, Higuruma's blade does just kill him. Which I have I see no reason why it wouldn't work against Mahito, especially without his curse technique. Do we feel like Mahito with his 0.2 or Mahito just in general with his domain expansion? Do we feel like that's a direct counter? Do we feel like he'd be able to activate his domain expansion and stop a uh, deadly sentence. So this is always tough because the question is, it's, if, if Mike opens it first, for sure, it's over. The question is if if, if it's a reactionary thing. And it, he has, there's, there's only one other opportunity where I think it's completely unambiguous. It's if 
if he opens it immediately in response to while Higurum's domain is still forming before all the rules take effect. But afterwards, it gets a little bit dicey because you have to ask yourself, is opening a domain an act of violence? Because he, he doesn't allow that, right? And I mean, not necessarily because we know you don't have to use your, your sure hit technique immediately, but the activation of a curse technique like that, it, it makes it really tough, right? It makes it extremely, extremely tough to tell because if it is, if, if opening a domain is an act of violence, he's not opening it. And then the scenario that we already laid out happens. If it isn't, Mario opens his domain and I'm inclined to believe that Mayuto's domain is more, like, if not the same amount of refinement, like, more than Higuruma's, and he'd be able to take over. Even in a tug of war, I think Mayuto just really easily beats Higuruma, like, in the in the midst of their tug of war battle. Like, while their domains are clashing and they're actually fighting, I think Mahito is going to take that. But it solely depends on if opening a domain expansion itself, like, not even activating the technique, but if the very opening of your own domain's barrier is considered an act of violence. And it's, it's really hard to tell if it is or not. Yeah, I feel like the win-loss kind of really depends on that answer. So I feel like because of the very weirdness, I feel like right now Higuruma is kind of a maybe. Um, yeah, it's a very it's a very conditional. In certain circumstances, in certain interpretations, he definitely does win. But in other ones, he gets like steamrolled. It's very hard to tell. This is a, de for me at least, this is a hard question mark. So right now, three victories, one undecided in the gauntlet. One of the very last players we have in this list in general that we'll kind of have to talk seriously about. Because I feel like as we reach this next level, of character, I feel like some of the discussions don't even need to be had. Hana Karusu, or more importantly, the person that doesn't fumble, Angel. Uh -huh. Yeah, so a Angel's technique is also another interesting one. It, it falls into the, the like, I, she's going to take Mariza's technique or like suppress it or whatever, however you want to say it, right? Mm -hmm. So in order to um say that Angel and Mahito are fighting and let's say Jacob's Ladder does take away Mahito's curse technique, if it's just hands, do we feel like it's the same kind of effect as Higuruma to where that disrupts the cursed energy maybe but we do see that there are different ways like so the reason i think it's different is because we've seen like for example inverted spear of heaven black rope both of those disrupt or like stop a technique from being used but neither of those have specifically had mentioned that they disrupt cursed energy manipulation so there seems to be at least in my opinion two different ways you can do it like one is either suppression or like stoppage and then the other one is removal Higurumas is removal it seems to be when you remove the technique from the person's arsenal that's when their cursed energy Energy gets wonky but when you suppress it like how angels fits in the category of like more of an inverted spear of heaven or a black rope or it, it just suppresses the technique rather than like taking it away we don't really have an indication that curse energy control gets kind of bad and if it's not the case angel could be really strong right but from what we've seen so far, she does not look that impressive. Like she, her, she seems to be like very much so a support type character or someone that is specifically built to deal with Sukuna, right? Or people that are like fused with other, um, with other people, you know what I mean? Like to like purify them in that sense. So I feel like this one as of right now, because I, I just don't, I'm sorry. I just don't, in, in, in Hana Karusu's body, I'm just trying to imagine Hana Karusu like being drawn, throwing hands in a pan and I just don't see it. I'm sorry. Until we see anything different, I feel like as of right now, we have to give uh, Angel the L. Until if we do find out she is just this awesome character that, you know, Hana really was the fumbler there. It was all yeah. her fault. Next battle, next time she's coming for Sukuna, she's going to knock the fuck out of Hana and she's going <laughs> to take over. Like, all right, I'm not fucking up again this time. So moving right along, it's going to be Kinji Hikari. Yeah, so, so Hikari's always an interesting character. I mean, obviously Jackpot is what everybody wants to hear about right but the question is like does Mario to let that slide for real like just initially i obviously want to get into jackpot because i think that's a, just an interesting discussion to be had and obviously akari can get into jackpot very quickly but if akari does not decide to open his domain i feel like almost from the jump he is in some some uh some deep waters there just because maito is not going to be maybe he'll be like annoyed by the like rough cursed energy effect but i don't know why that particularly damages soul and i don't know why hikari is going to be able to deal with like transfigured humans and everything that Mario could throw at him by himself. If he gets to him before a domain expansion or even clashes with the domain of his own, halting both of their effects, I think we can all agree base Akari is not taking down Mahito in any capacity. 100%. I feel like Idol Transfiguration is definitely a direct counter to someone like Akari, specifically because while Mahito is definitely very capable of fighting on par with base Akari and just overall physical combat, cursed energy output, everything like that, I feel like they would both, I mean, Mahito would definitely be having fun because he would enjoy having a fighter similar to the level like Yuji where he'd be able to go back and forth with. But I feel mm -hmm. like overall, even jackpotted Akari 
as you mentioned, would Mahito even stand for that bullshit? One thing about Hikari that makes his domain expansion a little rough is until he hits that jackpot, he basically just has to normal fight his opponent. Mahito is going to be at his throat while he's going to be rolling and going for a jackpot, breathing down his neck the entire time going like, I'm going to fuck you up. I mean, I guess you could say the amount of times he would need to be touched may change depending on what happens if he does land that jackpot where he gains infinite cursed energy. I'm sure that might have something to do with how Hokari is able to defend against his soul. But at mm -hmm. the end of the day, his healing doesn't matter. His overall ability yeah. to automatically heal, ability to automatically heal his limbs, none of that actually has any merit against someone who is just going to be able to affect the soul. While it may give him yeah. a bunch more defense against, you know, may give him a couple more counters, a couple more numbers on the dial before he actually gets taken out. At the end of the day, it's only four minutes and 11 seconds. Mahito is forever. Yeah, one, one big thing too, right, is we know, like, it's stated outright that, like, reverse curse technique cannot reverse the effects of idle transfiguration or, like, soul manipulation abilities, right? Even in Hakari's, like, unkillable mode, any soul damage he takes is permanent, at least as far as we know. Part of the reason why Sukuna didn't heal Junpei, right? It's because reverse curse technique cannot heal that. And I would consider Sukuna at least one of the most skilled sorcerers in terms of using reverse curse technique. So if it's something he can't do, unless explicitly shown otherwise, I'm going to assume it's something that nobody can do with reverse curse technique. We know that Hakari only can reopen the domain expansion at the end of every single round. So for four minutes and 11 seconds, Maito can open his domain expansion and then just use his sure hit technique continuously on Hikari to take him out. As crazy as this sounds, one of Hikari's most vulnerable states would be in his jackpot mode simply because he has to open domains at the ends of these periods. If not, he would have just opened them against Kashimo in the middle of a jackpot and just kept going without any fear of death. It's pretty clear that he has to wait until the end. It's, it's most likely a binding vow of some sort. And if you're leaving him without a domain expansion against Maito and he can't heal that damage you're looking at a dead gambler right there uh, it's it's kind of sad you know all these people that are saying yuta is just you know weaker <laughs> than <Hikari. laughs> yeah you, you ain't going on like that you ain't going like out like that that's all i'll say <laughs> my show still makes it very far it seems like the only people that can kind of hold a candle to him are culling game reincarnated sorcerers and higaruma maybe we're unsure. We're kind of down to the last four sorcerers who are, I, I, I don't even know if I plan it this way. This is just kind of how it happened. Maki versus Mahito, to which I feel like you have a video on that already, do you not? Yeah, I mean, Maki, I put Maki versus the, the disaster curse spirits, right? And I mean, even in our, in your Toji versus all of the curse spirits, right? Right, so I guess they're just gonna have to watch yeah. the video to yeah, see. Yeah, you're, uh, you're just gonna have to watch both. You're just gonna have to cross-reference what we say. <laughs> the big thing is Soul Splitter and Inverted Spirit of Heaven. Well, for Toji, I mean, for Maki, it's just soul splitter and she's really fast and really strong <laughs> like that <laughs> domain expansions don't work on her she's gonna run up slice him in two. Oh, he's still alive slice him in three and then just keep going at infinitum however long she needs to in the same way that that uh that like mahito kind of hard counters Hikari, maki kind of hard counters mahito because she can deal damage to him domain expansions don't work and she's fast enough she has like this this like pre-cog that allows her to deal with characters that are generally faster than her anyways so even if her and mahito were on like similar planes of speed that like ability to sense airwaves around her and, and whatever she awakened versus now you definitely would allow her to avoid all attacks honestly this is kind of what i was saying where these last couple of people we really won't have much to discuss because it's kind of cut and dry it's kind of very easy because all that we also we have left is the the four special grades ghetto or we can also include kenjaku in this because kenjaku yeah. while being an amped form of ghetto i mean i feel like we can both kind of we can also make the same decision for both of them and i feel like you just literally did a video yeah. Yeah, yeah I planned it all out. I planned it all out. It was uh, <laughs> it was my my eyes level planning. Yeah, and the reasoning I had there is is going to be pretty similar here. Obviously, if you want to watch over there for more in-depth explanation, do your thing. But Ghetto is fighting a, a Yuta and Rika. Specifically, Rika is the most useful one here. This Rika should be stronger. It's like an unlimited Rika than the one we see Yuta currently has in the manga, right? I'm not saying uh, Volume Zero Yuta is overall stronger, but specifically Rika. Uh, Ghetto fights that Rika and Yuta simultaneously without too much trouble for, for a majority of their fight. And that Rika is able to go back and forth with the Ishigori. We talked about this earlier. A very clearly like powerful fighter in that regard so Geto's like 
physical abilities are really high. He has Playful Cloud, obviously. He has 4,000 Cursed Spirits, right? That he can use to just swarm people. And we've seen that not only do people with Cursed Spirit manipulation amp their curses with their own Cursed Energy, making them stronger than what they normally would be, but we see that like Kenjaku specifically, but I think this logic would apply to Ghetto, pretty clearly just says, if I just swarm a bunch of low level fodder, I can take out like Choso level fighters easily. And I'm not saying Choso and Maruto are even, but all I'm saying is if you, if you throw just a wave of power that can easily demolish Choso and Maruto, he's not just eating it without getting like any, any sort of precautions or damage, right? And the great thing is as special grades, these guys have a lot of cursed energy. They don't even have to exercise him. They just have to weaken him enough to where they can absorb him. And then they get a new pet. So then up next, a special grade right here. We've got Yuki Sakuma, who we finally, after all the years of mystery, we know what she does now. How do we feel like Miss Mass Manipulation, Wrath of the Stars, Bomba Ye does against Mahito? Uh, so I I'll keep my heat for Yuki and check here, right? I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be fair and balanced. Yuki, like soul damage or not, right? She is obliterating Mahito, at least physically. I think, I think that's, that's very clear. She's strong enough to like blow the arms off of Kenjaku. She's able to like completely demolish special grades with just like one direct shot. She has a domain expansion, although we don't know the potency of it. She has a simple domain, which would allow her to counter something like Mahito's domain expansion. The only really thing you have to question here is, do you think Yuki has enough durability to sustain a prolonged battle with Mahito? And do you think she has enough curse energy too? Because if you say yes to both of those, then she just beats Mahito pretty outright. Yuki is is like generally superior to Mahito. The only thing is like Mahito can can bite back without a transfiguration because we know Bombay doesn't really enhance her durability. And then obviously you the only way she can deal with him is by like forcing him to heal. If you think she fulfills those conditions, then I think Yuki can definitely get a win. I mean, just a level of destructive power we do see Yuki dish out during her fight with Kenjaku. I mean, she's whipping Garuda around and just causing massive explosions and basically just piecing up the Tomb of the Star. Special grades do be special grading, and I feel like Mahito, <laughs> compared to people that can take on nations, not gonna do so hot. Yeah, not quite the same. Uh, and I feel like someone that's also a pretty much of a no-brainer, we probably don't even have to spend much time on, is gonna be uh, the honored one, Satoru Gojo, um, going Jesus. up against Mahito, which we kind of already saw how it went, but uh, I mean, yeah. it's just obvious. I mean, purple erases all matter. I mean, even if Gojo wanted to could win a war of attrition and just destroy Infinite break, stamina. Uh, yeah, like <laughs> break Mahito down until he can't regenerate anymore and just eliminate him like again like um envy from full metal alchemist like yeah uh, it's it, just, it would uh, it would be bad i mean gojo's gojo like it, it, it's just very clear if if kenjaku had a different way to deal with him he would have just sent Ma he would have just sicked Mahito on him but he couldn't obviously outer transfiguration isn't a problem Mahito's not touching gojo um and even if he could i gojo is not getting one shot by idol transfiguration let's be honest there's just so many win cons for gojo it's uh it's not even really all that fair he's the strongest sorcerer alive blah 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 you guys know the drill i mean he, he kind of bodies really badly yeah, uh, unfortunately, it's a no chance in hell for Mahito. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, and honestly, I know we do have a couple more contenders here. Um, we do have a couple more special grades to go over and someone that may or may not be a special grade. But I don't know if you're aware or not, but me and Broken Ronin have been doing this kind of collab thing for a long time. We have a lot of videos going out and actually a lot of the people that we're about to go over have some of their own videos, some on his channel, some on mine. So you're going to see some of these pop up on the end screen right here definitely feel free if you want to hear how we feel about yuta versus mahito and if you really enjoyed this content and you want more of it it's a great place to start thank you so much broken ronin for being here if you enjoyed my content please hit the subscribe button if you enjoy his content hit the subscribe button i definitely appreciate every single one of you guys and i hope you all have a great rest of the week peace